y'all implying that I might be carrying a child? Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm just Tara Brianna. If you are new here, thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. We're doing a Get Ready With Me Chit Chat edition because we are doing a Q&A. Y'all asked me some questions and we're going to get into the answers. But before we do, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hey guys, so today's video isn't going to be a makeup tutorial. I won't be talking about the products that I'm using, but for the girls who are interested, I will put a little pop-up on the screen so you guys can follow along, okay? So, let's get into some things. The first question is, what's your star sign and how old are you? Okay, so I actually have this information in my description box all the way at the end because I think about this a lot when I'm watching people on YouTube, so I thought maybe the girlies will want to know too. I am 26 years old. I was born um, July 15th, 1987. So, do I look my age? Comment down below what age y'all thought I was if you are new to my channel. But, yeah, I'm 26, girl. I'm pushing 30, okay? But I'm actually excited to age i know a lot of people be feeling weird about that and i don't know why but i am a cancer i'm a water sign um so my star or my sun is a cancer my rising is a libra and my moon is a scorpio i might as well give you the whole spiel while i'm at it because i be in the zodiacs but i don't think they're law i just think they're interesting to learn about when you're meeting people or tuning into people if that makes sense so it's definitely apparent that i'm a cancer i'm very emotional but it's not just that i feel like i'm very emotionally intelligent i know how i feel when i feel it and i can communicate my emotions really really well which a lot of adults don't know how to do at their big age unfortunately um i think my libra pops out when i'm just now meeting people i feel as though all first impressions you'll get the vibe that i'm very outgoing and i'm an extrovert and i'm a people's person girl i'm not really like that <laughs> and then for my moon in terms of being a scorpio i think people think that i'm mysterious i've been told this i'm not talking on my ass y'all people have told me like off first impressions i was like mysterious and they were just intrigued and wanted to know a little bit more about me so yeah that's my big three tell me your big three in the comment section down below so the next question is what's some advice you'd give to aspiring content creators Ooh, i would say um be yourself film content that makes you happy that interests you don't fall into the monkey see monkey do because it'll show throughout your content it is very easy for an audience to tell if someone is passionate about what they're doing so if you make videos about health and wellness and that's not really your vibe you're really into makeup like what would even be the purpose of doing that also if you ever go viral off of a video that heavily focused on an area that you're not going to want to always film content on that's going to hurt you in the end because now you'll probably feel pressure to do this one thing and that's not really a vibe so definitely know what you want to make content about early on so you can stick to that i don't think you have to necessarily find a niche because i don't even have a niche i, I focus on diy but I do hair, I do makeup, I do nail care, I do vlogs. I'm trying to get more into travel vlogs. I do a lot of different things on my channel. Um, but it's all because I'm passionate about it. So just make sure you focus on your passions. Don't get too caught up in start in worrying about when to start. That was my problem when I initially um started. I was like, oh my god, I don't have the right camera, I don't have the right setup, I don't have the best lighting. Girl, just start. Because if you don't, you're gonna be the only person holding you back. And you could have made so much progress if you weren't just in your head. Um, people are going to appreciate your content for different reasons, not just because it's the highest of quality and you'll get there. Eventually you will get there. And once you start, you will make money and you'll be able to invest in yourself and invest in your content and it'll get better as time goes on. So I guess that's my advice. It's just to start. Okay. Something very specific. If you are a YouTuber, I suggest that you film YouTube shorts that has given me the most growth across my channel y'all i'm about to hit 100k i know i've been saying this for a while but 
I'm probably gonna hit it any day now. And it's like, I, I don't know why I'm like fearful of it now because I've been waiting on it. It feel like my whole life, but it's coming and I swear it's because of how many YouTube shorts I've been doing. That's another piece of advice that I have for you guys. Um, Repurpose your content. So if you already are doing TikToks, if you're already doing Instagram Reels, just tailor them a little bit. Remove those trending sounds because you don't want to get copyrighted on YouTube. Um, add voiceovers. People love following your voice as you're doing things, but don't talk about exactly what you're doing. Make it fun. Tell a story. That'll make your video more interesting. But yeah, YouTube right now is heavily pushing YouTube shorts and it will make your channel grow exponentially promise you so yeah that's that's my little advice okay mm -hmm. uh i've been mixing my foundation lately because i don't have the right shade and i do not want to do this in my room i just feel like it's super messy but we gotta do what we gotta do boogie okay i usually do it with my finger and i wash my hands but i don't even feel like getting up child so i'm gonna use the back of this Rush. I got the right color. Yeah, that looks good. Someone said, I know you've mentioned before that you do have a nine to five. How do you manage working your nine to five while also creating content? This is a great question. I work from home, first off. If I had a job where I actually had to go out every day and commute, um, it probably would be way harder than it is for me. But I'm able to balance my time a little bit better because I work from literally my living room okay so that's number one for starters number two i work in operations so i don't have to be on as many calls as the normal person if you're like a project manager or you're in sales or something like that i don't have to talk 24 7 so when i do have breaks in between my days where i'm not doing much work or i already finished things that's when i'll go ahead and edit i make sure to film on the weekends today is a saturday um march the second and I'll edit throughout the week. So, um, also something that falls under the advice column for my girlies who are starting to become content creators, you want to film your stuff in bulk. So if you have a long weekend or a day off, try to film two to three videos if you can during that period and just block off time to edit and you can knock videos out and you have your three videos for the week and you don't have to worry about filming until your next batch is due. Um, I also create lists of content that I want to make for you guys. So if I ever have an idea, I hurry up and write it down in my journal just because sometimes you can experience like, like basically writer's block for content creating. Sometimes I don't know what to film. I feel like I run out of ideas. So having a, a running list of ideas for filming is very helpful. So yeah, bulk film during the weekend and then edit throughout the weeks um and girl if you do have a nine to five and it's a little bit more harder for you if you have a substantial amount of pto use it okay make sure you film make sure you're getting your content okay because this this is literally my second job okay and create a schedule for yourself because when you are your own boss and you don't have someone you know telling you what to do want to do it sometimes you don't invest that time into yourself like you should so creating a little Content schedule along with your content list is super helpful. Oh, this one says new subscriber. Welcome to the fam, babe. Thoughts on finances during 20s. So during your 20s and how to achieve affordable, high, but low maintenance styles. Hair, makeup, and clothes. Oh, okay. So the first part is thoughts on finances during your 20s. <laughs> You guys, I used to have horrible spending habits. Like, oh my God, my dad used to get on me because I have like a shared freaking checkers and savings account. Ugh, my college days, so very early 20s, I was I was cashing out every second that I could. What are my thoughts on finances in your 20s? Start a savings, okay? A little goes a long way. To make it interesting, I turn everything into a game. I don't know why it helps me achieve things better. Turn stacking up into a game. Do those little envelope things where you got cash and put $5 every Friday or something like that. Girl, do something, okay? Very much so something because things come up when you are entering adulthood that no one speaks about. If you're about to move out, you want to get a car, fees on top of fees on top of fees just pile up. And if you don't have anyone, like, in your corner telling you what to do, how to do it, because I didn't have, like, much 
structure when it came to learning how to figure out my savings um yeah just start one okay even if it's small girl um it'll accumulate and make sure you get a high yield saving account so your money can just keep stacking and stacking and stacking on its own do not get into credit card debt it's a good thing to spend on your credit card because you can get points but don't overspend and if you do overspend so you're going on a trip or something um pay that thing off as soon as you can okay focus on money because it's important but also don't focus too much because i like to live by you can't take this with you after you die so if you see something that you want get it you know if only if you can buy it twice if you have enough to buy it twice then you can get it because that means you can really afford it that's like something that i tend to follow all the time but don't stress yourself out about it too much because this is you are in your 20s and this is the time to learn make mistakes and things like that but i don't want your mistakes to hurt you later down the line so spend and have fun but just be smart with it okay just be smart and it's just about having a good balance so if you know you went out last weekend and you did your thug this with your friends you was out to the wee mornings and you was getting lit when i get lit i get i get uh spendy happy shots on me i don't know what that's about i tend to turn into a trick under the influence um next weekend stay in the house chill back because you know every time you step out of the house it's going to cost you $20 and then it's going to cost you another $50 because you need gas. You got to eat and you got to pay for parking. There's always something. So balance. The makeup is coming out good though, right? I should go somewhere after this. It's all cloudy and nasty outside. Ew. I'm so ready for spring and summer. Okay, okay, okay. How has becoming a content creator transformed your perspective? I wish you said perspective on what, but um, it made me realize that I love having a community. It changed my perspective on what's achievable for me, if that makes sense. Cause when I first started this, y'all, fun fact, I only started my YouTube channel because in my second year of college, I wasn't able to get a internship i wasn't able to work over the summer because my mom had just had a baby she was still going but she was going back to work and she needed a babysitter and i was at home and i said hey i'd help okay she was put a little bit of money in my pocket love that for me and i felt really insecure about it though because at the time all of my friends had internships i also didn't have like a major that was sought out by a lot of people to get the money i was a woman gender studies major what can you really do with that but i ended up in the healthcare world so god nothing but god but i felt super insecure about what i was doing or lack thereof felt like i wasn't doing enough so i was like let me start something let me do something with my time and i pulled out my grandmother's canon and i had a windows little small blue laptop at the time y'all and i got to work i got busy okay but when i started it out it wasn't to have any like financial means it wasn't to build any type of status it was just because i was interested in it at one point i was watching youtube more than tv and i loved all the girlies that i would tune into so i was like i could do this let me let me try and i did but i had no idea that one day it was going to help me help others in my life financially set myself up financially at one point i was only doing youtube and i wasn't working and i was straight i was able to buy myself a car i was able to move myself out and then i started working so it just changed my perspective on things that i can do and what's achievable now i'm about to hit 100k and we're only going up from here and it's just like dang if i could do this what else can i do what business can i start what can i do with the platform and the community that i've created here like if that's achievable anything else can be achievable as well so i guess that's how it changed my perspective i'm crying someone said i'm starving right now what's your go-to snack um recently i've been snacking like a pregnant person no i ain't pregnant and we're gonna come back to that because somebody tried me in this in this other question my go-to snack lately has been pickles right but you gotta get a ranch seasoning pack and put the ranch seasoning pack in a jar of pickles boom 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 shake it up let it marinate for a couple days boom get you a pickle and then get you one of them uh what's it called the seaweed snack and goes oh my god i get the teriyaki flavor girl 
that combination is too good if you are in for like a salty bag if you have a sweet tooth i've been eating fun fact i'm allergic to chocolate but i will take a benadryl to eat one of these i don't care it's this like ice cream bar and it's covered in chocolate and almonds Ugh. that has been my guilty pleasure lately oh my god it's too good speaking of too good i look too good can we get into it can we get two? Next up is if YouTube didn't work for you, what would be your second option? So clearly you're new because YouTube is my second option. <laughs> this ain't my full time job, baby. We have to have several streams of income. Oh my god, that should have been my number one. Like, well, you didn't ask me about advice for thoughts on um finances in your twenties, but that's a major thought. Have multiple streams of income. But I work in tech operations for a healthcare firm, so that is my nine to five. I have a big girl job. Okay, YouTube ain't the only thing cutting it. All right, she's cute. She provides me with a cute penny. And for those who don't know, it's not just YouTube. So I get checks from YouTube. I get checks from sponsorships. I get checks from Amazon affiliate links. And I get checks from other discount codes and affiliate links. I've dibbled and dabbled in UGC content creation where I'm not really showing myself, but I'm just filming some um, aesthetically pleasing shots and taking photos and things like that. Um, I have a I have an e-course on my Etsy. Like, it's a lot of things and ways in which you can get paid tiktok pays me it's a lot of ways in which you can get paid from doing um content creation but it's not it's not the bulk of my income it's great and it makes a big impact but it's not my main source so if it wasn't for youtube i would be working non-stop i might have started a business to have extra income i love passive income and that's why i like content creation so much because you can make one thing and then it can continue to get you coin while you're sleeping and that's basically what passive income is do something once and get paid for it over and over again without any more effort but yeah i will still be working in healthcare babe okay so those were all the questions that was on my youtube community tab i posted something on my story and someone asked me would I have liked to have done this video with something that they sell? Because I did a video like that in the past where um, I was drinking something that had TBC oil in it, basically. <laughs> Think of an edible before, it, but in a drink. And quick story time, I drank that and I filmed a get ready with me when I was answering some questions and I was lit, okay? I also um did a little session in my car you know little warm box if you will and then i came in and drunk the 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 thingamajig right when i tell you it was so strong but it didn't taste strong it tastes sweet it tastes like kool-aid i ended up feeling like i was gonna pass out i drunk the whole thing too quickly without anything on my stomach that was where i messed up at because i wanted to get the munchies girl i shouldn't have did that um I felt like I was going to black out. I felt like I was going to black out, pass out, and all the above. It had me feeling super woozy. I was scared to go down my stairs <laughs> at one point in time because I just felt like I was tweaking. Um, but me and edibles don't work, so I should have known that me and that wasn't going to work either. So to answer your question, hell no. And I don't even partake in those activities anymore unless... I am drunk. I am very easily influenced by my peers, unfortunately. And that is really the only way people can get me to puff on something is if I'm already lit. The last question. This hand over the stomach pic is a little telling with the side eye emoji. Anything we should know? And the answer is... Hell to the motherfucking no. Like... <laughs> hell to the no no y'all implying that i might be carrying a child please be so for real i'm not even ready for a puppy yet baby i'm not ready to carry no body's child the way y'all be beefing with y'all baby dad scared me and i got a great man he's a great man savannah but y'all still put fear in my heart because why do y'all be breaking up like that right after the baby's born, huh? Can you tell me a little bit about that? The actual process of having a child is extremely frightening. It makes me feel like I never want to have any involvement. I'm good. I'm, I'll be fine with being the rich auntie for the rest of my life. 
Sometimes that's how I be feeling. You know that that girl with the list? That's what just plays in my head every single time someone asks me if I'm gonna have a child. Cause you know, I guess 26. I'm a, it's a, I'm around that time. I'm a, I'm around that age where like everyone's having babies. Left and right. But what the hell do I gotta do with me? Not a damn thing. I just feel like I want to see the world more, travel, understand me, address my traumas, because I have childhood traumas, girl. Really understand my partner, live life together with him prior to bringing a child in the mix. Because once you do it, it ain't no turning back. I will never have as much free time. Um, And if I'm having a hard day, one thing I don't got to worry about is coming home and having somebody call me mama. Mm -mm. but i do know that i would be like the best mother oh my god so yeah you guys this is the final product i think the makeup came out so cute this is basically everything that i do every time i want to get ready um if you enjoyed these questions let me know in the comment down below if you enjoyed this video okay because i will film another one and y'all can ask me more stuff that we didn't discuss so be sure to give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, mamas.